everybody. Welcome back to another episode of Up and Running in Six Minutes. Today we're going to be talking about the CPS RF system. RF stands for radio frequency. Let's go. Now that you've gotten your equipment, let's see what you have. Open up the bag. Right off the bat you're going to have your CDs that have your software on it. Just set those off to the side. Next you have your RF, your radio frequency receiver. Looks a lot like a thumb drive. And you have your radio frequency clicker. When you received your kit, you might have received one that was numbered 1 through 24 for a 24 set. Or you might have received a set marked 1 through 32. One thing to think about and be aware of is how your school orders your clickers. They could be ordered in numbers of 1 to 32, or they could order them sequential for all the entire group that they ordered. So if they ordered 10 sets, it would be 1 through 320. So be aware of that fact in the event that you get a clicker set that starts from 33 to 64. Remember those CDs I told you to set off to the side for the software? I want you to keep those off to the side. Before you try to install any software on your computer, please check with your district personnel or your school-based technician. Some school districts don't allow you to install software, so please check with them. If you are able to and have the permissions to install software on your computer, just go ahead and put the CD in and follow the installation wizard. Now we're ready to plug in the RF receiver. Simply plug it into any open USB port and we're ready to go. One good tip is always have the RF receiver plugged in before you launch the software. Alright, now that your software is completely installed, either by your school based technician, district personnel, or yourself, we're ready to get rolling. First step is going to be is launching the software. Let's go. To create a new CPS database, follow these directions. Open CPS from the desktop icon. The CPS Open or Create New CPS Database window appears. Choose to create a new CPS file. Click OK. The new CPS file dialog box will open. Navigate your computer to select where to save the file in the Save In text box. Create a new folder by clicking on the New Folder button to store your CPS database. Double click the new folder so that it's displayed in the Save In box. Type a name for the database file in the File Name text box. Click Save. Your CPS database file will open. We've gone through the first time user setup. We've got entered all your information. Now we're ready to add a class and of course, most importantly, your students. Here we go. The Quick Class option lets you quickly create a class as you deliver a session. Click Engage, then Lessons and Assessments. Click the Engage button in the Verbal group. Click the Create button on the Class section. The CPS Create Class window will appear. Type in a class title, then use the lower range and upper range boxes to indicate the number of response pads you are using in this delivery session, as well as designating the response pad ID values in use. For example, if you are using five response pads with a response pad ID value range from 11 to 15, type in 11 in the lower range box and 15 in the upper range box. When you're done, click OK. We've got the kids all set up. We've got everything ready to roll. So let's engage your students. Let's get interactive. In CPS, it's possible to ask on-the-fly questions to your class for assessment. You can do this whether you simply want to poll your class or use in coordination with existing content presentations, or non-CPS resources, like websites. 
We can do this by using the verbal question mode of CPS. We'll start in the Engage tab. Click the Verbal Engage button. The Verbal Question Setup window will open. You can choose to have the grades automatically saved to the CPS Gradebook, have results automatically saved to Microsoft Excel, use Anonymous mode to not have responses tied to specific students, enter a session title, a session category, the maximum point scale, the appropriate class roster, and even have CPS generate an attendance record based on this assessment. Once you're ready to begin, click OK. The Verbal Engage toolbar appears. The Verbal Engage toolbar has the following options. Choose a verbal question. Choose to deliver a chalkboard verbal question. Change delivery options. Randomly choose a student or take attendance. Exit CPS altogether or close this particular verbal session. Click Verbal and select the question type you would like to pose to your class from the drop-down menu. You would then verbalize the question and the answer options to your class. After the responses are collected, click End to close the question. The charting feature will automatically appear showing the answer distribution for your class. Since the question was verbal and CPS does not know what the correct answer is at this point, it must be manually selected from the drop-down menu on the charting screen. Click Close. When you return to the question window, you'll see cumulative percent correct and question percent correct displayed at the bottom of the screen. This gives you additional feedback and confirms the question has been graded. If you would like to continue on with another question, simply select the question type. If you are finished asking questions, click close. Now that you've just finished being interactive with your students, you've engaged them. Now we want to find out the most critical thing. How did they do? So let's go over to the reports tab and see what we can find out. Click on the Report tab, then on the Reports button. Select the session you would like to evaluate. Click on the Generate button in the Reports group on the ribbon. The reporting window opens. On the left-hand side of the window, you can select which students you would like to evaluate. All students will be selected by default. You can also filter out students who did not respond. Select the report from the reports list on the right hand side of the window. For this video, I'll choose Instructor Summary. Click Preview at the bottom right hand corner. A print preview window will open, allowing you to view the performance data. The Views column on the left hand side of the preview window allows you to adjust how the report is displayed. These icons are also found in the toolbar at the top of the screen. If you need to print the report, click on the print icon on the toolbar. When you're finished, click close at the upper left hand corner. Well, thank you for staying with us for another episode of Up and Running in 6 Minutes. Be sure to stay tuned for more episodes where we talk about other e-instruction products.